Welcome back to Ultra Wide Wednesday, everyone. Uh, today we are in Titanfall 2, yet another EA first person shooter, actually the second in a row. Um, been drowning in video games and I'm um, trying to, you know, cover all of these new releases as they come out. So now we're doing Titanfall. Um, this is a little bit later than I would have liked to get it out uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, because I wanted to get back to Ford Showcase and uh, cater to my subscribers there. Don't want to leave them hanging out in the dry, but, um, or hanging out too dry. But uh, the second more important reason is that I honestly needed some more time with this game uh, just to spend some more time playing it to really make sure my opinion of it was solidified because I had some mixed feelings about it when it first uh, released and at least, you know, my first uh, couple hours of multiplayer experience and, you know, playing it on a PC for the first time. But I'll get into my background with it and all that. That way, you you know what uh, you're getting into as far as my recommendation and stuff of, of it goes. So, um. Let's jump into Titanfall. So my experience with the game uh, is that I played Titanfall 1 on the Xbox One. and didn't have a PC that I felt was powerful enough to run it, you know, satisfactorily at the time. And it was kind of, you know, geared towards being a console experience anyway. So I played it on Xbox One. I put about 250-ish plus hours into the multiplayer. I hit Gen 10 50. I'm pretty damn good at it. Um, I'll have one of the higher kill death ratios that I do and across the, you know, first person shooters I played. And I just thought it was a phenomenal game, very underrated. It was focused. It, you know, was limited in some areas as far as weapons and customization and amount of Titans and stuff. But the older I get, honestly, the more I like those kind of experiences, I'm kind of done with the battlefield fours of the world. I'm done being given 700 guns and only, you know, 30 of them are worth using anyway and only 10 of them feel unique or are fun to use. So I, I, I like these stripped down, you know, to the core multiplayer experiences where the shit that is there is there for a reason and it works and it's enjoyable to use everything. That's why I think Call of Duty 4 has aged so well over the years and why, you know, a remaster just recently came out for it. So um, that's why I really love the game. So obviously when Titanfall 2 was announced, I was absolutely pumped and I was very curious as to how they were going to handle it. Um, especially I was excited when I heard there was going to be a single player because these are some of the original, you know, Modern Warfare, Modern Warfare 2 devs. They know how to make single players for sure. So, um, I had, uh, I went in this game without, you know, trying to be, you know, too high of expectations or anything like that. Um, especially because Battlefield 1 floored me so much. So, uh, that's a little bit of my background. Played it on console with the glorious 792p, <laughs> um, but it still looked okay. And I had a lot of fun with it. So now, Titanfall 2, we're playing on PC. We are playing at 2560 by 1080p, almost max settings. Um, I actually played through the entire campaign at max settings, but I did get frequent frame rate drops on my 980 Ti. Um, into the upper 50s was the worst that I got, but it was often enough during very hectic battles with a lot of Titans that I dialed it back from the very high sets on like the sunspot shadows to just high. Um, this game also does, after it was patched, it, didn't, uh, it originally wasn't there, they patched in dynamic resolution scaling, which has been something that's very common on uh, these recent games coming out because you know, consoles aren't really powerful enough to push the graphical fidelity they want, so they put in a lot higher presets and then scale back the resolution whenever it can't hold 60 frames per second at, you know, 1080p or 900p, whatever they're running. So, fortunately, for people who are using lower-spec PCs, we get the same technology, which is awesome. I did, once I put that on, see sometimes the resolution would drop a little bit during multiplayer, sometimes during campaign, but multiplayer is definitely more demanding. Um, either way... It does run pretty well on a single 980 Ti. It's overclocked. 1070, 1080, you'd be fine at this resolution. Uh, just play around with the settings. There are two settings, however. Well, actually three that I'm a bit disappointed with. Number one, field of view only goes to 90. 90, actually, for this game, looks to be enough on both a 16x9 and a 21x9 monitor. Whereas in Battlefield, I have to crank it to like 105 to feel comfortable. I don't know what it is. Um... I have a feeling it's some somewhat of my bias coming in through the console experience, but I'll touch on that again in a moment. Um, so I wish that could have gone up a little higher. Number two is motion blur. There is a small amount of motion blur, and I can't, you know, you can't really turn it off as far as I know unless there's a custom launch option for it. And I don't really want to fuck with that. Um, also, something about my personal preference I'll talk about in a moment. 
And lastly, there seems to be this film grain that's always there. And it's very subtle. Like, you can barely tell unless you're looking at um, high contrast areas. And turning down the brightness on PC not only makes the game look a lot better, it makes it look a lot more like the lighting in the console version. It, you know, at least the contrast and stuff. Uh, but it also hides that effect pretty well and it makes it look better. So, um, in my opinion, brightness being snapped, you know, right in the middle is actually too high for the PC. Uh, by default, I think it should be turned down a little bit if you compare, like, some of, I believe, like, uh, a couple, like, PC Gamer and some other outlets did some comparison sh shots between PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and all of them look good. Um, but the PS4 and Xbox One do look darker, and I think it looks better darker. So, uh, you probably, I think the campaign, I have the standard brightness on, but as, you know, this footage goes along in a multiplayer, you'll see that it does get a little bit darker and it does look better in my opinion. So, as far as technicality, that's the only real, that's like some of a gripe I have for settings. It's not a ba it's not a huge deal. It's still a pretty good port overall, and at least they do support 21x9. So, um, we'll get into the specifics of that. So, starting with single player, um, it does commit the usual cardinal sins of 21x9. We start off with this badass looking um, live action CGI mashup cutscene. And it is in 1080p, you know, it appears 30 frames per second. Um, but it's in 21 by 9, but it's not full screen on a 21 by 9 monitor. So basically what it's supposed to look like is if you're playing on, you know, a TV or 16 by 9 monitor, it would be a 21 by 9 with, you know, horizontal bars on the top and bottom of your screen. But on a 21 by 9 screen, you get horizontal bars and vertical bars, so it's, you know, it looks terrible. Um, I really wish they could figure out, you know, depending on what size or aspect ratio your monitor is, I wish they would have just full screened it. I would have preferred blurriness over <laughs> over that, so that kind of sucked at the beginning. But from there on out, everything is in-game, in-engine, and... Unless there's a couple sneaky parts I don't remember right now, everything fills out your entire screen, which is awesome. Um, even like the you know the drop pod coming in stuff in the beginning of the game, um, and I think that's the way to do it. Call of Duty cutscenes are very similar, you know, unless it's like cutting away, um, like in the earlier games, like in Modern Warfare One, and they're talking about something over a map. Everything else takes place in game, and I think that helps with immersion. So, um, yeah, a single player was, was awesome in 21 by 9 Amazing single player, too. I was not expecting that. Like, they did some cool stuff with time shifting and the movement model. Like, it was just as much of a movement puzzle game as it was uh, an FPS with, you know, mechs. So, yeah, 10 out of 10 single player. I enjoyed it as much as I did Doom. That was awesome. Um, as you can see, there's a few things, peculiarities with 21 by 9 that do carry over into single player. And this is also going to come into my final, you know, decision about how 21 by 9 is with this game. So, <clears throat> first of all, as a pilot, you could see that your HUD elements are not stretched to the sides, you know, the corners of your screen. They are where they would be on a 16 by 9 screen. There's a couple parts where, you know, you're like calibrating your helmet and stuff, and it also ends where it would be on, you know, a 16 by 9 screen. Normally, I wouldn't be happy with that, um, especially on stuff like RPGs, like The Witcher, at one point, The Witcher was the same way, and they eventually patched in full support for 21 by 9 except for some cutscene stuff that you have to use in the hex edit for. <clears throat> but um, for this game, I don't really mind it too much, and that is because the next reason, when you get in a Titan, it's also, you're basically your field of view is blocked off to be 16 by 9 but the rest of your screen, you can see like the control panel and the switches and all that stuff uh, in your Titan. And I think that looks fucking incredible. I love this view. Like, uh, it feels like you actually are in a cockpit and you can see, you know, the controls and levers. And I was wondering how they were going to do that because, you know, your Titan field of view is honestly more important than being a pilot, I think. And if they, you know, didn't support it right, I feel like it would just be stretched. If they tried to do it, you know, where you would still have your full field of view, it would look wrong, you know. So I really like the way they did this. It does feel like um, playing on an ex you know an ultra wide monitor that you're sitting in a cockpit and you're a little bit more claustrophobic than when you jump out as a pilot and you have your full monitor to view. So yeah, I like that. Um, and because of that, I think it makes sense to keep the HUD elements 
at the 16 by 9 point. And I always feel like, you know, if you're looking through a helmet with a, with a heads-up display, that you'd still be able to see more around it than that. So it's not game-breaking to me, um, and this is something I don't really mind. As a matter of fact, sometimes, you know, I've, I've found that first-person shooters, I do like having those HUD elements closer. Um, it just depends on the game. Battlefield, I'm glad they're at the corner of this one. I don't really care either way, so... Um, that is an objective fact. It's just the way it is. There's, you know, whether you love it or hate it or just don't really care like I do. It's just, you know, that's just something to be aware of. Um, but I'm glad they kept it consistent at least. That way it does, you know, feel like you're getting into a real cockpit and feels like you're going out in the open and have your full field of view. So there is that. There's no other real issues with, you know, there's no gun stretching. There's no model issues, nothing like that associated with 21 by 9 The menus are fully fledged. You know, you get to see your full resolution the backgrounds and stuff are fine the um menus go over to the corners and and are, are situated where they need to be all that good stuff so yeah um they did a good really good job supporting this game and i think they you know kind of came out right and said hey 21 by 9 is definitely something we want to support there's 16 by 9 16 by 10 and i know i saw 4 by 3 maybe even 5 by 4 so whatever monitor you have you'll be able to play on this which is pretty awesome now comes to the part where i say uh I either recommend this game in 21 by 9 or I don't. And this one's going to be another complicated one. Um, unlike Battlefield, where in most first person shooters, where I play it and think, you know, this is the ultimate way to play it, um, I can't go back to 16 by 9. This one's a little mixed for me, kind of like Gears of War. And I think for very much the same reasons, except this one is more about preference than objective fact. With Gears of War, as being a first person or a third person game, you know, playing on a 16 by 9 screen, you see pretty much everything you need to see. 21 by 9 just, you know, I kind of think it kind of adds more field of view than is necessary and can kind of cause like visual overload. I feel like there's too much shit going on on a 21 by 9 screen playing Gears of War. Um, maybe it's partially the same thing, the reason I feel with this, but. This is a first-person game. I like first-person, you know, games with, with 21 by 9 So, you know, what's my deal with this? Well, first of all, I played through the entire single player with keyboard and mouse. I'd enjoy it. I liked it. <clears throat> I liked it a lot. And while I was playing it, I thought, this is probably the superior input option. You know, I could jump around and stuff just fine. Playing multiplayer, I don't know. It just never clicked. So I decided, you know what? What the hell? I'm going to plug in my Xbox One controller. See how I feel. And lo and behold, it felt like I was finally playing Titanfall. There was something that just felt off about this game, and I really couldn't put my, my finger on it. Yeah, it's a Titanfall game. It looks great. There's a shitload of new weapons. The Titans are kind of weird because you can't really customize their weapons, and you get, you know, you can't customize their chassis or anything, so they're all locked classes. So that's a little different. I don't like most of the maps in this game. I think map design kind of took a hit, but I'm starting to warm up to some of them and starting to like a few of them, so I think I just need more time with that. But playing with a controller, it finally felt like Titanfall. Getting that feedback, getting the rumble packs in your triggers when you shoot, uh, you know, feeling the vibration when you hit a wall and you're, you know, bouncing and, and wall running. It finally felt right. And I didn't really feel that on a keyboard and mouse. I'm going to go ahead and assume that's just pure preference. That's just all those, you know, hundreds of hours of playing on a console. I need that feedback. That's what Titanfall is to me. It's the same thing if a full Halo game ever comes back to PC. I'll probably play it on controller, and just like Peace, just like uh, Halo, I feel like this is a first-person shooter you can play on controller because there is a little bit, there's light aim assist, it's not much, I could honestly play without it if I had to, um, and it just, it just feels solid, it feels like it was designed for it, so that's one thing that I found a little strange. The second thing is, um, I went ahead and pulled the trigger and said, you know what, fuck it, I'm already playing with a controller, it feels good here. I wonder how it'll play on my regular 1080p 60 screen. So I switched from my 75 hertz monitor at ultra wide to 1080p 16 by 9 at 60 frames per second. It felt fine. It felt normal. Actually, it didn't feel any worse than 21 by 9 because of those HUD elements being in the exact same spot. Because you don't lose any field of view on your Titan, and it just felt like I was playing a console game at you know, most max settings somehow, you know, <laughs> and I was actually able to crank up the settings because my 980 Ti didn't have to, you know, pump out 50 or 25% more frames than usual. So yeah, um, this is a weird one because I thought 
it would be like any other first person shooter and I would be like, oh, no, nope, can't go back, can't do that again. We gotta have 75 frames per second. We gotta have ultra wide. But between the motion blur that I think hides a lot of the frame rate improvement, um, I really can't tell a difference between 60 and 75 very much unless you move very slowly. You can kind of see the fluidity difference, but the animations are so smooth in this game anyway. And same was with Titanfall 1 as well that like you don't really need that much more higher frame rate to get rid of the herky-jerky looking uh, animations because there really are none. Um, the 16 by 9 kind of HUD elements, every, you know, playing better on a controller to me, Honestly, it's to the point that if the population on PC drops too low, I might just pick it up on Xbox One because it looks all right to be running at 720p at, you know, in 2016. That's ridiculous, but because they use TSAA, because they're running it, you know, medium to high settings, it still looks fine. And we all saw what happened with Titanfall 1. The population on PC just tanked. And I have a feeling it's going to happen again here. They EA released this at the stupidest time possible. I mean... Uh, Respawn can say what they want, but I'm banking that EA is trying to drown out Call of Duty. You know, we're going to release Battlefield 1, it's going to sell like crazy. We're going to release Titanfall 2 the week before Infinite Warfare comes out. We're going to try to drown them out. And that's just dumb. They should have released it in spring again. That way, you know, we would have, number one, more polish, probably a little bit more content at launch. And it would get more sales because it's kind of during the lull of gaming. So, yeah, um... Between all of that, I just feel like it's this is one case that it's not a huge improvement on PC. It's great. I'm so glad it's supported well, and I'm having a blast. It looks amazing, but um, 21 by 9 yeah, I, I don't know. It ain't, it ain't amazing on this game. It's not, you know, oh, I can never go back like Battlefield 1. Luckily, it is supported, and I always think, you know, they should be, no matter what monitor aspect ratio you're playing on, but... This is one, you know, if I only <laughs> only played Titanfall 2 and Gears of War 4 and Dark Souls or, you know, all these games that I either don't support the monitor or just don't feel, you know, incredible on it, I probably wouldn't have bought a 21 by 9 you know? So, yeah, this is another kind of weird one. It, you know, objectively, technically, works great. Subjectively, uh, after playing 250 hours of the first one on console, eh, Take it or leave it. I think I'll be just as happy on my 1080p monitor, regular one, and um, let my, you know, 980 Ti take a little bit of a break. That way, it's not overheating as much, or um, you know, sitting at 72 degrees Celsius trying to keep up with 25% more frame rate. So, yeah, let me know what you think. Um, this was another surprising one to me, where I was like, eh, it's all right. Uh, tell me what you play in if you do have the game tell me what you think of the game and um i guess we'll see you in the next big release that i end up picking up it ain't gonna be tall call of duty though i can i can guarantee you that i don't really uh <laughs> uh haven't picked one of those up since advanced warfare don't plan on it either so yeah we'll see you next time uh in either another big new release or whatever i'm playing at the time in 21 by 9 we'll catch you next time bye bye <laughs>